Let's flip it over to the Ravens when they have the ball. And it's funny because after the first three weeks, everyone was saying Lamar Jackson bet on himself and he won. And I said, folks, there's 14 games left this year. There's two more seasons of franchise tag. This is not the time for the chips to be cashed in. The bet has a long way to go. And in the last four games, after seeing 10 passing touchdowns and two turnovers the first three weeks, now we've got three passing touchdowns and five turnovers. What's going on with Lamar Jackson after the first three games of the season? Yeah, well, I think, you know, two things. They've run the ball a little bit better, okay? Uh, they played some good defenses, and the fact that they had to play the Bills and the Bengals and the Giants and Wink Martindale, who obviously knows, you know, the offense a little bit as well. So I think that's kind of, you know, been been part of the issue. He has not played his best football. He's had some some bad turnovers late in the football game, th th this game especially, right? There's two interceptions in the second half, none being bigger than this right here with a chance to, to win the game, and now the Bills go down the field and do it. You know, so there's been, yeah, mistakes throughout the Giants game, the interceptions uh, at the end of the game there. And and then, of course, the strip sack fumble that Thibodeau gets. This was really probably the worst decision of the year in all of football, That the fact that he did that. So he hasn't played his best football down the stretch. And I will, I'll say this too, Mike. You know, this is one thing that we do see with the Ravens. You know, this is why their run game has to work and it's getting better and it has to continue to get better. Their passing offense is not, you know, a reinvention of the wheel. It's good. It's got a lot of what you need. There's no doubt. But it's not like, oh, to the fact of, you know, oh, wow, it's just they reinvent themselves every week and attack you from so many different ways. No, it's it. it you can catch on to it. And then when you don't have Rashad Bateman out there healthy, your one really go-to difference-making wide receiver, I think that causes issues for them too. So I think it's a, a little bit of him being careless and a little bit of uh, teams catching on to their passing offense, honestly, in my opinion, Mike, let alone they've played some very good defenses here as of late. Gus Edwards provided a boost against the Browns, 16 carries, 66 yards, two yeah. touchdowns, yeah. just in time because J.K. Dobbins – on injured reserve with knee issues again. Edwards it's back, shame. and that helps. And look, Kenyon Drake has come on. He has, and and they like to sprinkle in Justice Hill, right? And it, it can't just be Lamar running for a hundred yards every week and then throwing for a hundred or two hundred or whatever the case may be. They That's do right. have to spread it around a little bit, but, right? You know, this team, this team at four, four and three, they should be happy, but they also should be really pissed because. They could be 7-0. and They really could be. They've blown leads. And to the team's credit, they buckled down against the Browns and didn't blow that lead, although they tried to blow it. They tried. And that's where the offense has a role in this. It isn't just when a lead is blown. It isn't just the defense sucks. It's the offense has done something to open the door for the other team's offense to have an opportunity to exploit a defense that is having a hard time holding a lead. We saw the interception that was thrown by Lamar Jackson on that fourth down play, that ill-advised decision. The last thing you want to do there when you're playing the analytics game, well, if we don't get it, they'll have the ball on the two. They got to go 98 yards. Oops. Now they only have to go 80 because I threw an interception in the end zone. Th that, that's a, a thing that doesn't get pinned to the offense the way giving up the touchdown gets pinned to the defense. But that's part of it. The offense needs to slam the door when it has opportunities, Chris. Yeah, I know. And it, it hasn't done that. You're right. You know, there, there's been some chances to, to slam the door or at least make things very hard on another team, and they didn't. You know, but, you know, I, I, the defense, the defense, yes, has had a hard, hard time holding leads. And I think it's a little bit because we've talked about the pass rush and, and, you know, some of their secondary guys maybe not playing as well, a few injuries there as well. But, yeah, I think when you look at some of the leads early on in the year, it was a little bit of like, okay, they blew it, but the one thing they weren't doing at that point was running the football and where it became a little bit of the, the passing attack. And it was their style of play was lending teams to, hey, you're going to have a chance to come back. Here as of late, they've started to run the football and are doing the right things there. It's been more – the mistakes by Lamar that have kind of hurt them in that way. It's not necessarily the running game, the fact that they can't do that. It's the Giants game mistakes. It's, you know, Buffalo at the end there. 
And, you know, again, I don't think I, – I don't want to understate the fact that they've had to play some defenses who understand, you know, how they operate. The Bengals, the Browns, Wink Martindale. I mean, damn, those are three of, like, the, you know, top people you would go, well, they probably understand their system better than anybody, let alone yet a deal with McDermott and Leslie Frazier. So I think that's led to a little bit of the, you know, like – Wait, what's happened with them? Tonight, there'll be an interesting night to see. The Bucks don't stop the run all that well. And Ravens, like you just talked about, got it going a little in that direction. They're going to put the, the Buccaneers in, in some binds. And uh, it'll be a good test to see if they can kind of get things going back in the right direction. We need to take a break. Yeah. By the way, peel back the curtain. Anytime I say we need to take a break, that means Courtney has told me, break. But I do have to say one more thing. What? Because I thought of this yesterday. Yeah. There's some lingering potential for the old school Ravens Patriots bad blood to trickle into this one between Harbaugh, John, head coach of the Ravens, and Brady. I think back to that playoff game when the Patriots were down 14 points, two different occasions. They did the funky formation, and there was questions about whether or not they were playing fast and loose. And Harbaugh was upset. And at one point, Tom Brady said something along the lines of, hey, go read the rule book. Yeah. So he kind of jumped into the fray. And if I know John Harbaugh, and I do a little bit, yeah, he, he still remembers that. And he still associates that with Tom Brady. So he's not going to go easy on the old man tonight. If they get an opportunity to rattle him, to frazzle him, to make him look mortal yet again, John Harbaugh is going to enjoy it. He may not say it, but I think deep down he's going to enjoy. You know, it's the say hello to your dad yeah. mentality yeah, I hear you. his brother Jim has. He's going to take glee in the ability to contribute to the demise of Tom Brady. Well, I, I'm sure. I mean, I, you know, he's he's a Harbaugh. He's a tough SLB. I think he probably takes joy in, in, in uh, you know, being a part of the demise of anything almost as far as competitive football goes. That's the way he is. You know, but that's why they're, they're awesome. And we'll see. You know, we will see. You know, Brady, they're going to have some opportunities, I think, to throw the ball and be successful against the Ravens here tonight. You know, the other side of that is I think Lamar and company could have some sex success against a Bucks D that, you know, is not the same. Like we were talking about, it's just crazy. Without JPP, without Andama Kunsu, right? Akeem Hicks, they signed him, but he's been hurt a lot the last few years. Guess what? He's hurt again. Shaq Barrett's not playing as well as he should be. You know, Carlton Davis is not out there. There's no Sean Murphy bunting, right? Uh, Antoine Winfield's banged up. They lost Jordan Whitehead in free agency. So uh, uh, their, their defense is not the same. And then they don't stop the run here as of late. And that's going to be an issue. I mean, it is. This, this Ravens offensive line and the way they push people around lately and open up holes in the design Lamar quarterback runs, I think it's going to pose some problems for the Bucks. The Bucks don't have great size other than Vita Vea inside. You know, everybody else getting pushed around for the most part. And that's where... You know, this game could go either way. I could kind of see this game maybe even being a, a struggle and, and like, oh, wait, defense has got a good game plan. But I also wouldn't be shocked to see if this game ended up being a little bit of like last week where it becomes a track meet to a degree for a little while. I wouldn't. I think there's two teams here that have some things that pose problems with the other defenses. And, yeah, we'll see where it goes. That's where it's going to be fun tonight. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.